Good morning, champions. Yeah. Welcome to the assembly of the ambassadors of love. It's like something happened in our homes. You know, I used to be a teacher. So we can start hopping like if you are happy, you know, we jump up, up, and then bring back the spirit into you. So please, let's come alive like we are in, in God's presence. This is the assembly of the ambassadors of love. And we have been talking about begotten of love. Last two weeks, we encountered something in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. And we looked at the A part, begotten to live differently. Can you put 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, chapter 13, verse 6 for us? Today we will be looking at the B part. Now I did something for you because I want to draw your attention to something. New King James Version or any other version you read from just has, Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. If you look at that text, you will see to rejoice. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. What we looked at two weeks ago, love rejoices in, in the truth. In English, it gives you just rejoice, rejoice. But if you will look with me up, you will see the first rejoice is Cairo. Um, I'm sure there's a better pronunciation for it. And the second one is Song Cairo. That is where the whole meaning is. Because when you look at rejoice, the first Cairo means to be glad, to be full of joy. The second one implies to rejoice together with somebody, to share in another person's joy, to congratulate somebody else, to experience joy in conjunction with somebody. The first one was just for you to just be glad on your own, your heart, you're just happy on your own. But this one, you're sharing in another person's joy. And this, if you could cast your mind back, takes us right back to our lesson on love does not envy because it takes a non-envious heart to share in another person's joy. We're going to be looking at the second part, love rejoices in the truth. What does it mean to rejoice in the truth? When you remember that First John tells us that God is love, that makes me to ask the question, what would make God, who is love, to rejoice together with us? What kind of events will cause him to celebrate with us? What kind of things will cause him to be delighted with us? What kind of things will make God to just look at us and say, that's my own? In order to answer this, I had to run through the scriptures and here are a couple of examples I found. When we are able to answer this, we'll be able to to answer the question and to understand what Paul meant by love rejoices in the truth. Now, love rejoices with justice and unrighteousness. If you remember, we said last time that love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, does not rejoice in iniquity. Love is never on the side of lawlessness and wickedness. Why? Psalms 5 verse 4 tells us, For God is not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. Nor, nor shall evil ever be found in his presence. So when you see any part of the Bible that talks about God taking pleasure, God taking delight, God being glad, God rejoicing, if you remove it and fix love, you will have the understanding of what Paul was trying to tell us. That love rejoices in just, with justice and righteousness. Love rejoices when business is above board. Some of us already understand this. Sorry, I had to hide it to bring it up. If you know what this is, you can raise your hand. Can you see the bottom of this? Please come closer. You go to buy cooked ground nuts. Or palm oil. Or ground nut oil. Say, madam, I want a tin of oil. You... You say, yes, this one is 500 naira. This is 250. But can you see the inside of my tin? 
Is it visible? Can you see the back? So you already know that what you are buying is not it. And these are not um, non-Christians that do this. These are men and women begotten of God. So you take this in whatever is your own business and whatever is your own work and translate this to how business can be above board. Translate this if you're an architect. Translate this if you're a medical doctor. Translate this to whatever it is it means to you. I know that I'd forgotten this, but when I was coming to church, just there, it, it was brought back and my people had to run around to get this. So I believe the Holy Spirit wants to draw somebody's attention that love rejoices when business is above board. I did not say it. Proverbs 11 verse 1 says that God hates dishonest scales. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So what does love rejoice in? It rejoices when you are honest in business. So you have friends that are making profits, but they are making it dishonestly. It doesn't matter if the profit you make from this, use this and translate it to your work, is brought to church and is used in this building. It does not matter where the profit go to. God detests dishonest business practices. And that means that love does not rejoice. When cheating happens in the marketplace, it does not matter where the profit gets donated to. Love refuses to delight in deception. That people whose hearts are just so crooked, they cannot think straight. There are some of us that have friends who date multiple women. And they are very good in telling, so this one comes. And you are like, how were you able to squeeze yourself out of the situation? He said, nah. This is what I said. This is what I said. This is what I said. Ah, high five. You are an, an accomplice in the eyes of God. Love, delight, delights in honesty. It refuses to delight in deception. Love rejoices with integrity. The man you are when no one is looking. The woman you are when no one is looking. The person I am when I'm just alone. The person I am in my thoughts must be the same person I am when I'm before people. Love rejoices with integrity. Love rejoices in the company of those who keep their words. This still goes back to, this still goes back to what we've talked about earlier, that do, love does not celebrate liars. You cannot be a professional liar. Most of us have friends that just lie. My father normally says, people talk, na they just lie as they breathe. And then we have, we may not be the liars, but we are the friends who cheer them on. Oh, guy, that was really it. Love does not celebrate liars. For God hates lying lips. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, 22, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal delightfully, those who deal truthfully are his delight. So if you are trying, we are trying to understand what Paul meant by love rejoices in the truth. We're going back to look into the scripture to see what does God actually rejoice in? What does God celebrate? What does God delight in? Love rejoices with repentance. Especially when this repentance has to do with somebody we did not want to repent. You know, there are some people that are so wicked that you are waiting for their D-Day. You want the Lord to punish them so they can know that it is no good to be wicked. But love rejoices with repentance it celebrates when one sinner abandons his evil ways and turn to god we see this example in the parable of the lost sheep 99 sheep were here and then the shepherd left that one those 99 to go look for one god himself says he does not take pleasure in the death of the wicked person. He's not just a wicked person. He doesn't take pleasure in the death of anyone for that matter. You can see that in Ezekiel 18, 23 and 32. He, that's why God takes time to counsel the wicked. Turn from your wicked ways and leave. Love celebrates repentance. The love of God in us must be abundant enough that no matter how much we wish a person should be punished because of what he or she did to us, when we, we should actually be able to step back and pray for that person's repentance. The love of God rejoices with the truth. It is important at this very point to clarify which truth 
Paul is talking about here because we live in a world of diverse truths. Love does not rejoice with your truth. Love does not rejoice with my truth. Love does not rejoice with our truth. You hear, speak your truth. It is her truth. It is their truth. Love does not rejoice with our truth. God's love rejoices with the truth. And the truth is a person. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So love does not rejoice with anything that is antithetical to Christ. No matter how popular or widely embraced that may be. We have a movement that is literally trying to sweep into Africa. Homosexualism and all manner of... The alphabet are almost um, exhausted now. A, B, T, D, Q and all of those kinds of stuff. And then it is propagated on the basis of love. So you cannot talk about heaven and hell in certain quarters. Otherwise you will be accused of hate speech. I cannot tell you you are doing what you are doing wrong. Should you die today... You will not go to heaven and hell is real. If I do that, I am brandished, I am banished, I'm, I'm labeled as one who is, who is involved in hate speech. Our love, we cannot, I cannot love my children so much that I cannot tell them the truth. You cannot sell it, separate love and truth. These two are allies. When you separate truth from love or you take love from truth, what you, now, what you are now left with is what Proverbs 17 talks about. We have men justifying the wicked and condemning the innocent. We have people propagating things in the name of love and in the name of God that is not God. So love does not rejoice with my truth. It does not rejoice with your truth. You are free to have as many truths as, as, as you can think of. Love rejoices with the truth and the truth is Christ Jesus. The truth Anything that is not in line with him is not it. Love is not so inclusive and tolerant that with the truth, you know, for those of us that understand, you're talking about this is an era where we talk about inclusivity, tolerance, and all. love is also inclusive and tolerant with the truth that I go to the east and borrow doctrines from eastern religions. I go to the north and borrow whatever is going on there. I go to the west and borrow it and go to the south and then mix them all and match because I want to be so loving and so inclusive and so tolerant and so politically correct that I forget that the foundation of God stands sure and everyone that names the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. Love rejoices with the truth. It is my prayer this morning and as we listen and as we go home, we'll sit back and examine what is our truth. What do I rejoice with? What gladdens my heart? What makes me excited? What do I secretly celebrate? What is it that makes me come alive? Because you may not be the person, but every time somebody comes out as gay, you say, ah, I love his, I love his boldness. You, some of us have children for... Or, or nephews or relations that are cohabiting and when they come to our house we prepare guest room for them and they are not married and they are free enough to visit us with that person and we prepare guest room for them and we, we say this in certain quarters we say hate speech you're not being loving you're not being tolerant you're not being inclusive love is not so inclusive that the truth becomes missing in action so what do you celebrate what gladdens your heart? Because we are begotten of a God who is love. And we carry his nature. So it means that if he walks with us in the flesh, the things that celebrate, that we celebrate should cause him to rejoice. So go back home and take your Bible and go through it. Every place you find delight, celebrate. Pleasure. God takes pleasure in this. Just put love and then weigh yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. To rejoice with the truth and not gloss over the truth. To believe the truth and not edit the truth. To obey the truth and not avoid it. Because love embraces the truth. Rise and let's have our affirmation this morning. Say with me. I am an ambassador of Christ Jesus. 
by his spirit say it like you mean it i live as he lived i am fully committed to rejoicing in the truth of god's word say it boldly i love the truth practice the truth and rejoice with the truth i am an ambassador of love I extend God's love to the people around me. I refuse to love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. I commit today to praying for the well being of those around me. I am begotten of love to live differently. I celebrate, congratulate, and rejoice every time the truth wins out. I love what God loves, and I detest what he detests. The love of God in me rejoices together with the truth. It does not embrace unrighteousness. I am begotten of the God who is love. My heart is not responsive to wickedness. I am an envoy of love to my world. I refuse to be aligned with darkness. I am a reflection of the character of the God who is love. I am not a supporter of popular and unpopular evil. I am of God. I belong to the truth. I listen to the word of God. My life is not governed by selfishness and self-promotion. I am begotten of the God of truth. I will not exchange the truth of God for a lie. I am committed to embracing the truth. And never letting it go I am not opposed to the truth of God my life is not opposed to the truth of God my actions are not opposed to the truth of God my words are not opposed to the truth of God the spirit of this age finds no expression in me I am a faithful witness. My life points men to Christ and to his work. Amen. Amen. Just lift up your hands and just tell God, may I be a person who is responsible to your truth.